In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who willed that your word should take on the reality of human flesh in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, grant, we pray, that we who confess our Redeemer to be God and man may merit to become partakers even in his divine nature, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord spoke to her husband and said, Ask the Lord your God for a sign for yourself, coming either from the depths of Sheol or from the heights above. No, I has answered, I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Listen now, house of David, are you not satisfied with trying the patience of men? without trying the patience of my God too. The Lord himself, therefore, will give you a sign. It is this, the maiden is with child and will soon give birth to a son whom she will call Emmanuel, a name which means God is with us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. You do not ask for sacrifice and offerings, but an open ear. You do not ask for holocaust and victim. Instead, here am I. Here I am, Lord. In the scroll of the book, it is stands written that I shall do your will, my God. I delight in your law, in the depth of my heart. Your justice I have proclaimed in the great assembly. My lips I have not sealed. You know it, O Lord. I have not hidden your justice in my heart, but declared your faithful help. I have not hidden your love and your trust, from the great assembly. Here, my Lord, I come to your Second reading, a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Bulls, bulls blood and goats blood are useless for taking away sins. And this is what Christ said on coming to the world. You wanted no sacrifice or oblation, prepared a body for me. You took no pleasure in holocaust or sacrifices for sin. Then I said, just as I was commanded in the scroll of the book, God, here I am. I am coming to obey your will. Notice that he says first, you did not want what the Lord lays down as the things to be offered. That is, the sacrifices, the oblations, the holocaust, and the sacrifices for sin, and you took no pleasure in them. And then he says, Here I am. I am coming to obey your will. He is, he is abolishing the first sort to replace it with the second. And thus, will, will was for us to be made holy by the offering of his body, made once and for all, by Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Alleluia. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. He went in and said to her, Rejoice, so highly favored, the Lord is with you. She was deeply disturbed by these words and asked herself what this greeting could mean. But the angel said to her, Mary, do not be afraid. You have won God's favor. Listen, you are to conceive and bear a son, and you must name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, the high priest. The Lord God will give him the throne of, of his ancestor David. He will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and his reign will have no end. Mary said to the angel, But how can this come about, since I am a virgin? The Holy Spirit will come upon you, the angel answered, and the power of the Most High will cover you with its shadow. And so the child will be holy and will be called Son of God. Know this too, your kinswoman, Elizabeth has in her old age herself conceived a son, and she whom people called barren is now in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible to God. I am the handmaid of the Lord, said Mary. Let what you have said be done to me. And the angel left her. The Gospel of the Lord. I'd like to go begin by greeting all of you, my fellow pilgrims here in Fatima, who've come from different countries around the world. We are from the Philippines. I am the bishop of the Diocese of Caloca and Bishop Pablo Virgilio David. I'm here with the clergy of Caloca and also the family of Father Vic Nicdao from Guagua, Pampanga. What a beautiful time to be here in Fatima on the solemn occasion of the Annunciation of the Blessed Mother. I advise you today to pray a bit more pensively the Angelus, because the whole prayer of the Angelus is really about the Annunciation of the Angel Gabriel to the Blessed Mother. Allow me to reflect on the Gospel that uh, you've heard from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38, infusing some ideas that are from my country, the Philippines. You know, we have an expression in our language, in the Filipino language, that somehow manifests the deep spirituality of our people. It must be one of the reasons why we are a very resilient uh, people, resilient to calamities and trials in life. I am referring to our Filipino expression, bahala. Bahala, which according to some scholars, actually means bathala, which is the native or indigenous uh, name for God. Well, too bad some people tend to look at this as a negative attitude, especially the expression, bahala na. And, uh, you know, in Arabic, they'd say, inshallah. You know, uh, apparently it's close to that, you know, by God's mercy, it will happen. Well, some say it reinforces in us Filipinos a come-what-may kind of reaction to any crisis situation. In English, they often characterize bahalana as pure fatalism. Well, sometimes that is also true. You heard from our first reading, for example, about the king of Judah, King Ahaz. 
he's an exact illustration of this kind of attitude. Jerusalem, the capital city of Judah, was about to be invaded by the joint forces of the kingdoms of Damascus and Samaria. Now, King Ahaz was being pressured to join a coalition against the Assyrian Empire that was expanding its territory by occupying its neighbors like a Pac-Man. The prophet Isaiah is trying to give him the assurance that God will take care of Judah. And he's offering the king a sign. Ask for a sign. I wonder what sign you're asking for as you come here to Fatima. But Ahaz turned down the offer of a sign from the prophet. Well, obviously, he had made up his mind to just capitulate, to surrender to Assyria rather than to join the coalition. And in many ways, I would call that the negative bahalana. Or, inshallah, by the mercy of God, let things be as they should happen. It comes in the form of a surrender or defeat, even before the king is actually attacked. It goes with a fatalistic attitude whose reasoning is, what can we do anyway? But the prophet gives him a sign, and the sign that he gives is a child about to be born of the wife of the king. And the name is the sign, Emmanuel, which means with us is God. God is with us, Emmanuel. His attitude is, well, if I team up with the coalition, Assyria will attack us. If I submit to Assyria, they won't need to attack us. At least we will be protected from Damascus and Samaria. That was his way of saying, Bahalana. But is that really the meaning of that expression for us Filipinos? As they'd say in Tagalog, Mamatay kung mamatay. We die if we must die. What the prophet is telling the king is this. You must stand your ground. You say bahalana, but not negatively, but positively. In Tagalog, we'd say, kung kasama natin ang Diyos, noon lang natin masasabing tayo ang bahala. Kung kasama natin ang Diyos. If God is with us, then we can indeed say, God will take care. There are Filipino scholars who do not think so. They have reflected more seriously on bahala na and what it says about our uniquely Filipino worldview. I'm talking about the philosopher Dr. Joseph Celano of Ateneo Philosophy Department and the late theologian Dr. Joe DeMesa of Mary Hill School of Theology. Dr. DeMesa even wrote an entire doctoral dissertation entitled, And God Said Bahalana. He submitted it in the Catholic University of Louvain. It was subtitled, The Theme of Providence in the Lowland Filipino Context. I checked the Wikipedia definition of bahalana, and here is what it says. It is a socio-cultural value, as well as a phrasing in Filipino language, that is either said as a fatalistic attitude towards life, or as a determined one in a challenging situation where things are risky and uncertain. It can be translated to mean whatever happens, happens. In Spanish, they say, que sera, sera. Or, things will turn out fine. Or, I will take care. In Filipino psychology, it is supposedly described as a determination in the face of uncertainty. In fairness, the Wikipedia entry says, Bahalana can be both positive and negative. I am inclined to say it, that to say that it is more positive than negative. Well, today's Feast of the Annunciation gives a situation which Filipinos can relate to. It is a good illustration 
of the positive term, Bahalana. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, let it be done to me according to your word. Let things happen as God would have them happen. Meaning, now that I know what the Lord wills, I am going to cooperate. It is not exactly a blind leap in the dark. Sometimes people call it surrender, surrender to God's will. I think it's negative to say surrender as if you were defeated. I think Mary was embracing God's will as her own will. After getting the clarification that she sought from the angel Gabriel, Mary expressed her willingness to assume the responsibility that God was entrusting to her. Let me switch to some terms in Filipino. Kaya pala ito rin ang salitang gamit natin para sa pangungobyerno, pamahalaan, pamamahala. It's also from the root word bahala. It's about standing one's ground, exercising leadership in the spirit of stewardship. What it really is saying is, I am not God. I am just a servant of God. But I am willing to take the role of Bathala if he entrusts it to me. I will do it on his behalf. I will do God's will. So like I said, this is not exactly the same as surrender in the sense of giving up because you have been defeated or about being in a no-choice no situation like saying in Tagalog, Sige na nga, ano pa nga bang magagawa ko? It's actually about making a choice. The choice to embrace God's will as my own will. Bahala na means ako ang bahala. Ito rin ang expression na ginagamit natin para sa tawag ng, na magmalasakit. Such as when we ask ourselves, when we are bothered by another person's situation, bakit kaya ako nababahala? Or when we are confronted in our indifference and people ask us, hindi ka ba nababahala? Hindi mo ba'y kinababahala ang maaaring mangyari sa kanya? Literally, it's like asking, are you not feeling as God feels? It presupposes that God cares. And when you also learn to care, you are learning to be truly godly. To feel as God feels. You are responding to the call to assume God's role positively. To care, to express concern, to take responsibility. Well, of course, the negative version of this is playing God. It's also negative. We call it in Tagalog, ang nagdidios diosan As when we arrogantly say, ako nang bahala sa iyo. Like a patron who is just asserting power rather than expressing care. Literally, what he's saying is, I will be God to you. Well, these expressions have existed long before Christianity came to the Philippines. So we cannot just dismiss Bahalana as a mere expression of a colonized people's resignation to their fate. Okay, you can look at it that way. But outside the context of our colonial submissiveness, it is really positive. It is to say, I may not be in control of things, but I know that God is. I will face this difficult experience with faith and trust in what it can bring. And I will just give it my best shot. Like saying, I will listen to the angel's assurance. And that assurance is, with God, nothing is impossible. And so, when we give people an assurance that we care, that we will take responsibility, we say in Filipino, huwag kang mabahala. It means, do not worry. Or literally speaking, what we're saying is, I will do it for you while you cannot. Until the time when you too can say, ako ang bahala. Let me end this by addressing my fellow Filipinos. 
Kaya nga kailangan natin ng ganitong klasing pagninilay. Napakarami nating mga pananagutan sa buhay na kailangang harapin na hindi natin mapaninindigan kung sobrang bilib natin sa sarili o wala tayong bilib sa sarili. Ang bahala ay nakabase sa tiwala na sa Diyos walang imposible at kaya niyang ipagawa sa atin kahit pati yung iniisip natin na imposible. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear sisters and brothers, filled with paschal joy, let us pray more earnestly to God that he who graciously listened to the prayers and supplication of his beloved son may now be pleased to look upon us in our lowliness. For every prayer we say, Lord, hear our prayer. For the shepherds of all souls, that they may have the strength to govern wisely the flock entrusted to them by the Good Shepherd, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the whole world, that it may truly know the peace given by Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters who suffer, that their sorrow may be turned to gladness, which no one can take from them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own community, that it may bear witness with great confidence to the resurrection of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silence, we offer to the Lord our personal intentions. O loving God, who know that our life in this present age is subject to suffering and need, Hear the desires of those who cry to you and receive the prayers of those who believe in you through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, Almighty God, to accept your church's offering, so that she who is aware that her beginnings lie in the incarnation of your only begotten Son may rejoice to celebrate his mysteries on this solemnity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the Virgin Mary heard with faith that the Christ was be, to be born among men and for men's sake. For the overshadowing power of the Holy Spirit, lovingly she bore him in her immaculate womb, and that the promises of the children of Israel might come about and the hope of nations be accomplished beyond all telling. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, 
that through the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her righteous spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Confirm in our minds the mysteries of the true faith, we pray, O Lord, so that confessing that he who was conceived of the Virgin Mary is true God and true man, we may, through the saving power of his resurrection, merit to attain eternal joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has been offered. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.